Sunnyvale is a modern city located in the Santa Clara County with a population of close to 150,000. It is the seventh most populous city in the San Francisco Bay Area and one of the major cities comprising Silicon Valley. As part of the California's high-tech area, Sunnyvale is the location of the headquarters of many technology companies. It is also home to several aerospace defense companies. Sunnyvale is ethnically diverse and a melting pot of many different cultures. It is a wonderful city with pleasant weather, beautiful parks, nice restaurants, and good schools. Looking at the heart of Sunnyvale now, you would never have imagined how this city looked 150 years ago. Let's journey back in time to find out how the city has transformed from wheat fields to become the heart of the high-tech industry called Silicon Valley. We are here in front of the Sunnyvale Historical Museum, also known as Sunnyvale Heritage Park Museum. It is a replica of the Martin Murphy family home. It was built in 2008 after five years of fundraising and planning, the museum became a reality. This was a vision of a longtime community leader, a resident of Sunnyvale for 40 some years, who is passionate about preserving history. She is also a former planning commissioner, had chaired many city projects, and had received numerous community awards and recognitions. She is none other than the founder and the director of the Sunnyvale Historical Museum, Laura Babcock. Let's go in to meet her. Hi, I'm Amy Ryman of the Cupertino Television Production. We are here today at the Sunnyvale Historical Museum with our special guest, Laura Babcock, who will give us a tour of this museum. Thank you, Laura, for being here today to tell us a little bit about your involvement with the museum. You're welcome. It's a building we're very proud of, so we're very happy to welcome you here to uh, take a filming tour of it. You have been very involved with the museum for almost 12 years. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, I've been a resident of Sunnyvale since 1979, a member of the Historical Society since 1981, uh, but became very involved in the museum project in 2001. It had always been a dream of the Historical Society to have a real museum, and I naively accepted the challenge in 2001 <laughs> to see if it was a possibility of uh, being able to accomplish it finally, after so many years of waiting. Uh, five and a half years later, uh, I'd raised $3 million, and we opened wow. this building in the fall of 2008. What inspired you to be so passionate about having a museum? I think the more you know, the uh, more you learn about Sunnyvale's history, it is really very unique. And it's unique not only in the area, but unique to the state of California in the fact that it was founded by Martin Murphy, Jr. But I just thought it's a very important part of history. And it's mm -hmm. a very interesting part of history. And the fact that we did have a historical state landmark house here in Sunnyvale, which was the original Murphy House. But sadly, heritage preservation was not a strong mm -hmm. subject mm -hmm. any part of California, I don't think, in the uh, early 1960s. And so sadly, it was bulldozed to make room for an expressway. Uh, and the historical site has been basically trying to get a museum to showcase that history. How did you manage to have so much funding while other people before you have tried and failed? 
I think the timing was just right. It really piqued someone's interest. Uh, the fact that it came along in my life at a time when I had just retired mm -hmm. for a salaried job, shall I say, uh, and could put the time into it. And of course, funding started out very small with just a walk-a-thon or a kickoff dinner downtown, our first one, and then a lot of local log time families uh, were really very much in favor of it and started some of the major fundraising as far as donations were concerned. But yes, it took five and a half years and they're a wide, wide range of source of funding. Uh, some from technology, very little audits, and from the oldest two companies in Sunnyvale, which of course are Northrop Grumman and uh, Lockheed, uh, the two, and then family foundations, uh, heritage preservation grants, various fundraisers that we did. Just the selling of the bricks and tiles out front raised a quarter million dollars. And everyone had a chance to leave their name in Sunnyvale history and to have it here permanently. Can you tell us some of your events and uh, activities throughout the year? Oh, for here in the museum? Yes. Um, we're open 12 months out of the year, three days a week, always free of charge. Uh, it always tours available or you can wander on your own. But then we also do um, special events where we hold an antique appraisal fair, uh, we've done uh, Books and Authors Day. Anyone who is an author in Sunnyvale mm -hmm. or wrote a book about Sunnyvale. Uh, we do um, Fancy Dancy Victorian Teas mm -hmm. twice a year, both mm -hmm. in the holidays and the spring. That brings in a lot of people. We do a speaker series where you have speakers come in three to four times a year. Can you tell me which ones are the most well attended? Uh, yes. And for various different uh, reasons, of course, our fancy teas, there's none other like them in the uh, Valley, and so they are a complete sellout every single year. But then uh, many, many of our speaker series are very, very popular. Probably the one that was wall-to-wall -wall, uh, people attending was one engineer who had spent his entire 51-year career working on the Hubble telescope. That was jam-packed. Many, many, many interested uh, engineers, both old and young, that were interested in that particular uh, topic. I know that you have a permanent exhibit and also rotation, the rotating exhibits. So what are the ones that you have so far? And how often do you change the rotation? Yes, exhibits? when we designed the museum, we purposely designed one room to be a rotating exhibit. So each time you came, there would be something new and different for you mm -hmm. to see. It, to encourage you to always come back, not just been there, done that, saw it once. Uh, and so we change out the exhibit upstairs uh, at least three times per year, sometimes four times, depending upon what the subject matter is. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has been going on now for 12 years that we've done that. The current one is wartime in Sunnyvale. Many people don't realize Sunnyvale was really involved in both World War I and World War II with the basic companies that were here. Of course, World War I would have been um, Joshua Hendy, Ironworks, and Westinghouse made all the uh, turbine engines for all the Liberty ships. We have done the history of uh, canneries in Sunnyvale, the history of education from the very first grammar school through today. Uh, we've also done orchards and orchardesses. Uh, we've done women's work at the turn of the century. History of a telephone. Mm -hmm. When the telephone first came to Sunnyvale, That's which is a very popular one, you would think it would be rather a small subject, but mm -hmm. it wasn't. Uh, it, uh, it was amu so amusing to all of us to watch children try to dial a <laughs> dial telephone. Uh, they kept trying to press the buttons, and there were no buttons, no buttons. to press. Uh, 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 it's really very educational for kids to be able to try these old things uh -huh. and try to figure them out. And so there are a lot of times there's things that they can operate and uh, be sort of integrated with instead mm -hmm. of just only look with their hands in their pockets. But doing those exhibits allows us to showcase everything that we have in our collections at some point. The museum isn't big enough to put everything that the museum owns on display at one time, but this way 
it is always on display at some point. It may take a few years, but you'll be able to see everything that we own. So where do you get your revenues for day-to-day -day operation and regular maintenance since you do not charge admission? No, we do not charge admission. It was very important to us to be free of charge, including the school program and uh, all admission. Uh, and we are completely separate from the city. We do have a comprehensive mm. agreement with them that we are required to uh, be self-supporting. Uh, so our revenue comes from a wide range of things. We have a large gift shop, which mm -hmm, does mm -hmm. museum store, which does very well. Uh, we have donation boxes set appropriate lace when you've taken a tour and think that was really worth it, I'll put a donation in. We do a capital campaign uh, once a year. We do everything from garage sales twice a year, and then of course the Victorian teas are very popular income raising. Mm -hmm. And people are very supportive when they know they can come at any time, bring any family member or friend or Cub Scout group or Girl Scout group, and we give them their lessons for their history badges. Uh, they're very receptive to that and are very willingly and freely donate towards mm -hmm. that. Good, thank you. So now you can show us around and see all the artifacts that you have in here. Can you describe the routes that the Murphy family took from the Oregon Trail to reach California? Yes, this starts the introduction to Sunnyvale history with the Martin Murphy uh, Jr., who was part of the, uh, I said, first successful wagon train across the Sierras. The Murphys emigrated from Ireland to Canada, Canada down to Missouri, and that's when the malaria plague was going through and they lost several family members. And so then they decided to head out to California, which they had heard was the most wonderful place. And so the long trek that was across the Sierras, and as I said, they were the first successful one to uh, arrange in California. And you'll see in the top portion, we're part of the uh, wagon train branched off up into the Oregon Trail, which was open at that time. But they blazed the trail completely from that junction on into Sutter's Fort and into California. It was a very harrowing uh, thing, trying to get covered wagons and mm -hmm. oxen over the top of the Sierras in the middle of winter. Uh, it, uh, very challenging, and you have to remember that there were two women who were very pregnant at that particular uh, point in time. So uh, they were strong, tough, determined individuals. Mm -hmm. One of the babies um, fell into the water, uh, and that was Elizabeth Yuba uh, Murphy, who was born on the trip. And she was put into a sling of a horse and slipped out of it and fell into the Yuba River. And so that's why her name is Elizabeth Yuba Murphy. The, her father said that was her first baptism, and so she kept the name when she was baptized here in California by the Catholic priest as well. We are here in the dining room and the parlor. Looks like the Murphy family did have lots of money. Look at all the beautiful furniture, the piano, the chandelier. Yes, the Murphy family and the emigrated, they came for religious and education freedom. This was not a uh, immigration because of the poor and starving. It was way before the potato famine happened. So one of the first things he did when he uh, came here was literally put his mouth where his money was, or money where his mouth was, and started the first higher education. It's what you and I today call Santa Clara University. Mm. And within a year, he also wanted his daughters educated, and he started Sisters of Notre Dame. Both of those schools uh, still operate today and are still in very high esteem today. I see two pictures of uh, young women. Who are they? Uh, the first one on the right is uh, Elizabeth Yuba Murphy, uh, and then the other one is her sister Ellen. Uh, both of those are hand-colored portraits. Uh, they are not paintings. Uh, all the gentlemen in the family have oil paintings, uh, but the daughters had hand-colored photographs. And the piano, uh, the piano is a four-square grand piano shipped around the horn. Uh, it still plays beautifully today. We have a volunteer who keeps it in tune and comes and plays it uh, regularly. They also had, um, you know, gold gilded Tiffany uh, clocks, candelabra, uh, lots of sterling silver, 
all engraved so we can tell who it belonged to for each generation. But, uh, on down to the handmade lace tablecloth that was uh, made in Ireland and came over. A lot of their furniture too is basic farm furniture, but very nice and high quality. Now this is the kitchen of the Murphy home. Yes, uh, most all of these items are period to the Murphy time frame. There are a few that are original ones. Uh, the stove comes from the Joshua Hindi house, mm -hmm. 1906. Um, all of the way up to what was new and modern mm -hmm. uh, back in the days, as such as our water cooler, which is supposed to do regeneration or rejuvenation mm -hmm. uh, water. Mm -hmm. And when we looked it up, it turns out you're supposed to run the water through a radium core. Oh. Uh, that this was supposed to really, you know, sort of like today's sports water mm. on it, rejuvenate. And when we looked inside of it and cleaned it up, sure enough, there was something in it. So we did a slight panic and called the Sunnyvale Hazmat uh, team. And after they had a very good chuckle over it, they came out to take a look at it and measured. And sure enough, there was not a radium core and they doubted it ever was. So I think it was just medical quackery <laughs> at its finest. <laughs> And this is what we refer to as the bishop's bedroom. Uh, it, um, we said uh, Martin Murphy immigrated here for his religious and education freedom. And religion, of course, is a very important part of their lives. And he had one room set aside in his house here in Sunnyvale just for Bishop Elamani. This was his halfway point when he had to ride his horse from the mission in Monterey oh. up to San Francisco. Uh, and so this is the original bishop's uh, bedroom furniture, and then of course many of the other small details from the Murphy family, including the Castro Cross. We are here at the main exhibit hall, and can you tell us what's in here, and especially describe a little bit how the incubator machine works? Ah, yes, one of Sunnyvale's early entrepreneurs, uh, Mr. Bessie figured out how to incubate eggs using steam as opposed to electricity, which of course dramatically dropped the uh, mortality rate of baby chicks when they were hatching. Uh, it was part of the World's Fair in 1927 and made quite the splash when the first ones ever developed. And this entire exhibit hall sort of gives a background history of the early Valley of the Hearts delight as well as City of Destiny. We have our early businesses, our early city government, uh, our incorporation that is covered here, and then, of course, very much the early cannery, all the way down to such details as a gas uh, pump, back when you could only buy one gas by the quart, not by the gallon, because mm -hmm. you didn't use that much, on to our x-ray shoe fitting machine. That actually came from Kirkish Department Store in downtown Sunnyvale in its basement. On it, people would bring their children to the shoe store, the department store, to buy their one and only pair of shoes per year. And they need to make sure there was enough room for the child to speak to grow and still be able to wear them for the year. Mm -hmm. And so they actually did it by x-ray. Of course, uh, radiation has proven not to be such a fun an inventive thing for that particular use as the years went by, but people do get quite a kick out of it. And we're rather surprised at how many people remember it, mm. because those things were actually used in legal yet into the 1950s. Mm. And then the history goes on to Moffat, and of course our special um, exhibit on the Handy Ironworks. Handy Ironworks grew up to be Westinghouse, grew up to be Northrop Grumman. Handy Ironworks and Northrop and then of course Lockheed and Lockheed Martin are mm -hmm. two of the largest defense companies mm -hmm. in the uh, United States on it and so pretty much every president that's been president during a time of war or crisis has visited Sunnyvale because of the defense industry. Is this the first echo phone? How does yes. that work? Yes, another one of Sunnyvale's early entrepreneurs on it. Uh, Mr. Bessie who uh, designed the Jubilee Incubator for the incubation of eggs. His son mm -hmm. was also an entrepreneur and helped uh, design the very first Echophone radio. And it was located on North Sunnyvale Avenue, literally across the street from the Murphy House. Mm -hmm. The 13th radio station license issued in the entire United States was here in Sunnyvale. 
on KJJ. Unfortunately, during the 1930s and the financial crash, uh, he would lost the company. Echophone oh. Radio is still being made today, but it is owned by a company in Chicago. This room, this mural, is our version of a timeline of how this valley had changed. Starting out with the Ohlone Indian, where it occupied the entire area. The first mission, Santa Clara Mission. Martin Murphy arriving as covered wagon and all of the wheat fields that he planted. The first railroad from San Jose to San Francisco came through the Murphy land. The early downtown, all four of those buildings still stand today in the 100 block of historic Murphy. The two large scale industries, both arriving in 1906, and that's Libby's and Libby's Cannery and Hendy Ironworks. Then it shows the valley for as far as you can see is nothing but orchards. Orchards and blossoms with some farming in the north end of town. Then the arrival of the 1930s of uh, Moffat, and the mural ends in the late 1950s with the arrival of Lockheed when they systematically started bulldozing all of the orchards and putting in rows of housing. As this exhibit shows the history of Lockheed, we worked very closely with the company when we set it up. Lockheed is either blamed or credited, depending upon your point of view, for the beginning of the change from agricultural into technology. They arrived in mass in the late 1950s and over a period of a couple decades became the largest employer in the city of Sunnyvale, overtaking all of the canneries. Uh, this exhibit shows there are many, many programs they had working with the Navy to space to underwater uh, and all of the uh, government defense industry as well. Can you describe briefly what this room is for? Yes, this is a rotating room upstairs, and today's current rotating exhibit is World War I and World War II in Sunnyvale. Uh, so these are the many artifacts that we have uh, for that particular subject, from uniforms, uh, many photographs of when the uh, stationed, uh, soldiers were all stationed in downtown Sunnyvale, and various collections that are associated with it. And this room, again, has used for many, many different topics. This just happens to be the one that is in current now and will remain up this summer. This exhibit is showing the history of the high technology development in this particular area. Where we have the various categories from software to electronics and onward from 1800 through 2010. Uh, this was installed in 2010, so hopefully it will be added on to very shortly. It shows each one of the various categories and what was invented or discovered at that particular time. It is key so that the S shows what was developed in Sunnyvale and the gray portion so what was developed in the Silicon Valley. As you can see, most all of the technology took place here, especially in the 1960s onward. So it was designed in such a manner that each one of these boxes can be changed out, artifacts and added, or videos added, or a new topic can be added. Laura, what's your plan for the future expansion of the museum? We plan to continue uh, to grow. Of course, history doesn't stop just because a particular favorite era stops on it. And so we are continuing to collect today's history on it. Uh, we hope to expand, put an expansion or extension onto the museum mm -hmm. to start more in depth with high tech, but also all during the Cold War era of Sunnyvale. And then the other component will be a research library. Oh. We are becoming quite the center for research, uh, fielding research questions and uh, doing it. But we have no dedicated space whatsoever to actually do this work. Uh, so we're hoping to put into a real uh, research library with our ever-expanding collection. Thank you so much, Laura, for your time and for sharing your wonderful knowledge of the history of Sunnyvale with us. You are very welcome. We enjoyed showing you around. The Sunnyvale Historical Museum chronicles the story of the courage and the desperate survival of a family of devout Irish Catholics 
who sought freedom of religion and educational opportunity in a land far away from the home they knew. It was a cultural decision to leave their country. They venture out through the wilderness to an unknown territory to fulfill their dream of finding a land in which they can prosper. The evolution of the city of destiny was made possible by people who work hard and embrace all the challenges that came their way. The land they found had grown from a farming community once described as Valley of Heart's Delight to the modern city with advances in high-tech industry now known as the heart of Silicon Valley. This concludes our program for today. Hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have in presenting it to you. If you would like to learn more about the history of Sunnyvale, visit their website. Until next time, take care and thank you for watching.